Howdy folks. So today we're going to be looking at this thing in our random teardown. This is the Earthmate High Performance GPS receiver by a company called Delorme. Um, I couldn't find a lot of info on this um, and I have taken this apart and I'll give you a little bit of backstory but anyway this is a serial RS-232 GPS receiver for a laptop. So the idea is you would put this in like a car with a laptop or something and you could drive around and gather data. I, I honestly don't really understand what the use of this was. Um, this was, I think I found this at a garage sale or something for like 25 cents, so I, I picked it up. I was unable to get it to work because uh, it uses some weird serial protocol. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get it to talk to me. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have dated this, it's from 1999, so I thought it'd be interesting to see what's inside something, you know, at this point a 16 year old GPS unit now, you know, GPS is super micro, you can fit it in anything, but back then we needed a device like this. Now I took this apart, I, I originally just wanted to see how I could get it apart uh, before I did the video to try and make it faster, but I'm glad that I did because this thing was held together with the strongest double sided foam tape I have ever seen in my life. Um, I mean, the tape is probably uh, m more interesting than the product. Um, so anyway, the electronics are outside of this and uh, I thought I'd just give you, show you the case first. So there's just a rubber bead that just covered this gap and there was the cable that came out there. And this thing is powered by four uh, AAA batteries. Obviously, uh, you can't pull that much power off the serial port. So the case is not very important. So the interesting bit is what was inside. So this is the insides and I'm sort of holding it together because this was all soldered together and I had to go through a lengthy process of desoldering these cans. So anyway this is the rubber gasket with the cable going through it so this would have just sat in the groove under there and the battery contacts there's one here for the negative one here for the positive and the serial cable just goes into this little uh, header block which is non-removable now, everything about this was designed to never come apart again. Uh, they double-sided sticky taped everything together. Um, this 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 kind of stuff makes Apple's tape look like nothing. So anyway, on the front we've got this uh, ceramic substrate with a like a metalized surface here, and this is obviously the antenna. And it's all just inside cans. So first thing I did was this is double-sided sticky tape to this can. So I took this can off. Um, the can is not complete. As you can see, it's got this large opening, and there's a coax which runs uh, down to the board here. Just do it upright like so. So this chip here is uh, unknown. I did a quick search on this, and I get no results. All I get are you know the companies that claim that they have the part, but they really don't. They're just sort of gaming the search queries. So no idea what that is. Uh, here we have a uh, MAX3221, so that is a uh, RS-232 transceiver. We have a crystal here. I'm not entirely sure if that's 10.949 megahertz or if that's a part number. I, I don't actually know what speed that is. I, I kind of like the way that they've they've uh, locked it in there. They've got these little gold pin, uh, little tabs that wrap around and hold the crystal down in place so it doesn't move around. Because I'm assuming that something like this, the time base is obviously very important because the GPS is all time based. So I think clock jitter caused by you know vibration of the crystal would be important. I I don't I don't entirely know how how susceptible they are to. Uh, yeah. I don't know how bad uh, the readings you get if, if the clock is off. So there's this one device on the board here that I can't, for the love of me, uh, figure out what it is. Its silkscreen says FL2, and you can see that there's two traces uh, that clearly go to this device, and it's got two holes all the way through it and they're bigger on one side than the other. 
I'm not entirely, I, I feel like this is some sort of RF voodoo uh, device, but I mean, I haven't seen anything like that before. So I'm not quite sure what that is. Everything else is just tantalum capacitors. Um, this would be all your analogy type, type stuff. So on the other side, this can I also removed. So we have a big chip here, another connection chip. Uh, again, no idea what it is. Uh, there's no data on it, unfortunately. Here we have two SRAMs. They are 256 K-bit each, so 512 K-bit total of uh, RAM. Down here, uh, this sticker was originally on this. Uh, this is an Atmel uh, PROM, so this is one megabit of single-time programmable memory. So obviously that's where the, uh, the program is stored, and that's of course the version of the program that's on this. And then in this corner here, very tiny, we have another Atmel device. Uh, this is a 16 kilobit E-squared uh, e PROM. So this is probably where uh, settings or configuration data that's stored on here uh, during runtime would go. So I can assume that one of these is probably a, a main processor and one of these is a GPS receiver. I'd say this is maybe a processor, this is maybe a GPS receiver, or this is like an analog front end for, for GPS and this is a digital uh, part of it. I, I can only assume that this is a chipset that goes together. Uh, the part numbers are not, uh, are not in any way similar, so I don't really know. It's interesting how this board has these sections where the solder mask is missing, and it's this kind of black, it's almost like a chalkboard-like finish, and they, uh, they, they actually stamp um, serial numbers. Obviously, there's supposed to be a serial number, but there isn't. And that's kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before. Usually, they would just put a sticker or something on it, but that's, it, it, it's, 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 imbe it's embedded into the board. It's actually kind of nice. So there we go, copyright. The whole board is actually made by Connexent, uh, or designed by them anyway. Copyright 1999. Um, you can see all the chips, 9949, 9949, 9947. So this is all late 1999. Probably early, early 2000, maybe, manufactured date, given by the, uh, the dates on the chips. This was probably made turn of the millennia. There we go, yeah. So there we go, 2013. So this is probably the newest chip on here by date code, so definitely early uh, early 2000 manufacture, but a 99 or 98 design. Other than that, it's not very interesting, unfortunately. I can't power it up, and I can't actually get it to do anything, but I thought it was kind of interesting, you know, to see this is the amount of circuitry you needed for just a basic GPS receiver 16 years ago, and now, you know, all this stuff can be replaced by a tiny chip that also does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that sort of stuff. It's it's kind of amazing. The power requirements have gone way down. It's it's amazing how uh, how fast things progress. So anyway, hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.